Good day, YouTubers. Hope everybody's doing well today. Uh, thanks for joining me here for this video. I appreciate you taking the time to out of your busy schedules to watch. I know everybody's busy uh, these days. Um, these uh, this this particular bag of bottles here was given to me about two years ago, and I've had it sitting sitting in the corner there, waiting to do a video on it. But I've recently purchased uh, quite a quantity about. Uh, six plastic storage tubs six or seven probably of uh of uh antique and vintage bottles so i've decided i gotta start uh, doing some videos on them it's kind of like an un unboxing videos so i can get these things uh, cleaned up and put away and uh out of my kitchen area here <laughs> so anyways let's get started with these oh uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take them out of the bag and uh, display them. We'll put them on here. Do a little talk about them. I got some uh, info about them here, so we'll just discuss those a little bit and uh, carry on. So here's the first one. Oh no, that's that's a more modern one, and uh, that's the one I'm working on right now. How'd that get in that bag? I wonder. Hmm. I'll set that over here. So the first one. Here we go. Check it out. Beautiful emerald green capers bottle. This is a capers bottle. What are capers? Capers are flower buds from the Mediterranean and they're pickled in vinegar, kind of like uh, olives. Kind of like olives and I love olives by the way. I'll buy a jar of those and just eat them right out of the jar. Nice bottle. Alright, I'll set that there. That should be a good location. Next one. W. H. Clark Druggist, St. Stephen, New Brunswick. Beautiful blown bottle. That's a local druggist. By the way, WT and Company. Nice aqua blue color. Got no real info on that, and I can't really find any online. Perhaps like the local library might have some info on that company, but uh, I love the local druggist bottles. WH Clark, local drugstore. Nice aqua blue color. Blown bottle. What next do we have here? Check this one out. Appears to say Mox and Pharmacy, Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Sweet castor oil. That is just a beautiful blown in a mold bottle with a tooled lip and uh, I find that to be like aesthetically pleasing. It's just, it's got everything. A beautiful, it's got a recessed panel on the face of it here. And it's just a beautiful bottle. Check it out. Nice one. Nice one. It's not a very sunny day out to look at these folks, but uh, the natural light is still probably better than a light bulb, so check that out. Nice looking bottle. Sweet castor oil. Beauty. And next up, we got this little clear one here. Henry Jonas and Company, Montreal, established 1870. It's a machine-made one, and these were generally a flavoring extract. They were into other uh, products as well, but this is most likely a flavoring extract. And for this area, uh, vanilla and lemon flavoring extract seem to be quite popular, so perhaps it was one of those. Well, what else have we got here? There's a big one. Florida water. 
blown in a mold with a tooled lip. And that is going to be a uh, unisex cologne. Okay, it was introduced in 1808. And this bottle is probably like the 1890s or early 1900s. Look, big cork still in there. <laughs> okay, it's stuck up in there. Anyways, there it is. Unisex cologne. Nice big bottle and big old long neck on it, and it survived. Okay, here we go. Next up, another pharmacy bottle, druggist bottle, established 1843 to 1903, 60 years, two ounces, full measure, and this one is N. Woodensons. That's Nathan Woodenson, and it's uh, from Portland, Maine. A Portland, Maine druggist bottle, blown in a mold, tooled lip, and I wonder if I got any, any other info on this one. Well, not really, but I see one on eBay has sold for $12.50, so there you go. Nice looking bottle. Here's a look at the uh, Nathan Wood and Sons bottle. And Wood and Son pharmacy bottle. In the natural light. Perhaps you're wondering why I'm telling you all this. And I wonder myself. And next up, folks, let's see what else we got here. Uh, I wonder what that could be. That's a familiar looking bottle. There's a Charles H. Fletcher. You get, you get the uh, whole script writing on the edge there. Charles H. Fletcher. And on this side, Castoria. This one here is machine made. These are generally a, like a light aqua blue color or a greenish color, which this one is. And uh, this was a laxative. Now this company used to be named uh, Dr. S. Pitchers. And you can find these exact same shaped bottles that say Dr. S. Pitchers there instead of Charles H. Fletcher and then Castoria same on that side and uh, the name changed between somewhere between uh, 1893 and 1897 so if you find any of these that say Dr. S. Pitcher they're likely in the you know before 1893 or so it's a nice uh, nice bottle they're pretty common if you haven't found one yet you probably will And uh, what else we got here? Here's a nice bottle. CC and Company, Toronto. This one is machine made. I've dug one of these up myself. It's a little bit bigger than this one. So they do come in uh, a variety of sizes. And this is Carter, Cummings and Company. There's virtually no info online about this bottle or that company, but there you have the bottle itself. <laughs> All right, I'll set that there. There's that nice CC and Company Toronto bottle. Nice amber cork top bottle. Okay, here's another bottle. Dr. S. N. Thomas Eclectric Oil. Nice clean looking bottle. It's like an, I don't know, like an icy blue color. 
internal, external, it's embossed on all four sides. Beautiful uh, blown in a mold bottle with a tooled lip. Well, that might even be applied, I can't tell. But what a beauty of a bottle. These are pretty common too. And what's the dates on these? I believe I got a date on these somewhere. Uh, it was sold as a pain relief remedy in Canada and the USA from the 1850s into the early 1900s, like real early 1900s. Beautiful bottle. Uh, what else we got here? There's one here. I think there's 15 bottles in total, so... Bear with me. This is a Dr. Hubbard's Vegetable Disinfectant, Deodorizer, and Germicide. Dr. Hubbard's. Probably 1920s. And it had 85% uh, alcohol in this bad boy. Unlike my uh, spice rum over there, which is... What's the percentage on that? That's only 35%. This was 85%. <laughs> uh, yeah, that'd light you up, wouldn't it? Okay, I'll set that there. Next up, folks. Check it out. Parisian Sage Hair Tonic. From Buffalo beautiful uh, manganese color this one's really turned purplish it is blown in a mold with a tooled lip I'll try to uh, get some footage outside with the unnatural sunlight shining through this bad boy and this is probably early 1900s and they had the slogan of uh, the only way to cure dandruff so, if you had dandruff, this was the remedy for that. The only way to cure it. Parisian Sage. Parisian Sage, hair tonic bottle. Lovely purple color to that one. Nice blown bottle, yep. Next up, come on down. We got the uh, Vapo Cressoline bottle. There's the patent dates there. U.S. patent date is 1895, and the English patent date is 1894, so a year earlier. It's got these little nubs all over it. These generally turn like a, a purplish color. They're manganese glass, I think, for the most part. I don't think I've seen any that aren't, so I'm guessing this one probably is too. It's got a lip chip here. I've never found a complete one myself, but I sure would like to. Blown in a mold with a tooled lip. Nice little bottle. Next up. Oh, a Nervaline. Kingston, Ontario. Boys, these bottles are from all over the place. From all over the place. I got no info on this one. This is a pretty common bottle, but uh, it's machine made this one. You can see the seam there. Love that ring around the lower part of the neck there. Beautiful aqua blue color. And. Next up, we got a clear Dr. Seth Arnold's Balsam. Stopper still inside of it there. It's machine made. This was a remedy for bowel complaints, whatever that means. Uh, it's uh, supposedly a quack, a quack opium medicine. And I found a couple... Uh, like a collector's cards from this company online there and I'll show pictures of those and if you want to you can just pause them apparently you're supposed to 
find the cats in the pictures. If, uh, if you like doing that, just pause it on the pictures. I'll put those up next and uh, play along. Okay, folks, I think I got one or two more bottles left in the bag there. And uh, if you stuck with me this long, <laughs> congratulations for putting up with my antics. Wow. All right, but at this point, I'd like to give a big shout out to uh, Coin and Relic Ontario. Well, that's my buddy Andy over there, and he's a faithful viewer and commenter. And if you're not subscribed to him, go check him out and subscribe and tell him I sent you. <laughs> and also to uh, Jeffrey Hull Jr. and him and his son Lou, and I believe they're down in uh, New Hampshire, and they're digging in the best dump ever. And they're pulling out a lot of nice bottles and a lot of nice glass. So check them out. Subscribe and all that good stuff. Okay. Put, oh, did I show you that? Nice little bottle. <laughs> Next up, folks. Here we go. Oh, there's <laughs> that freaking thing again. That's a lot lighter than the last time I picked it up. I don't know. How, I don't know what I'm doing. I gotta lay off the jungle juice here, folks. <laughs> Okay, so finally, folks, this is the last one here. We have a Poison Liquid Iodine Skull and Crossbones bottle. Fairly common uh, poison bottle from probably like the 30s. It is machine made. A liquid iodine. That's an antiseptic that you'd use on wounds like cuts and abrasions, that sort of thing. So a nice little uh, poison bottle. So there we go, 15 bottles, what do you think, about $100 worth maybe? <laughs> okay, and also, we're not done yet, we got two marbles came with these bottles. This little orange and white one kind of looks like a friggin' creamsicle ice cream. And a nice marble of course. And of course this one here, which appears to be blown, if I'm not mistaken. I'll get focused on it there. Oh man, it's not gonna focus. Let's uh how's that? There we go. It looks like a pondle mark right there. I would say that's blown. If you were to dig that up, that'd be a daymaker right there, boys. Alright. That's going to be it for today, folks. Hope you enjoyed the uh, bottles and everything else that goes along with it. So, Stay tuned uh, for the next video. I'm looking forward to hearing from you all. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment. Over and out, folks. Have a great day.